We have our friend Sheena back in the studio. She's in the building. As much as Isaiah and I know about relationships, she knows even more. You're an expert. You're a relationship coach. Thanks for uh, coming in today, Sheena, and joining us. Valentine's Day, getting real, real close. And so what better time to get some extra relationship advice? So Sheena, the first thing, as a relationship coach, what is the top thing that you're, well, let's start with your single clients. If you got single people uh, that are your clients, what are they asking you about right now with Valentine's Day coming up? Yeah, that's a great question. So I hear a lot of questions right now from my singles. Like the top one is, how do I deal with being single during Valentine's Day? Everybody around me seems like they're in a relationship and in love, and I'm sitting here not. So that's the, <laughs> <laughs> that's the big one that I hear. And then kind of how do I deal with the pressure of finding a date of, you know, Valentine's Day is, is coming up. I want to, you know, go out with somebody. So how do I deal with that pressure of, you know, hearing that from my mom or my friends? Oh, so, oof. yeah, yeah. it's not a fun one. Um, <laughs> hey, when are you going to get married? It's like, I need to get a date first. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> And another one that I hear a lot is like, how do I celebrate as a single? I don't know what to do. I don't want to go out mm. to a restaurant by myself and everyone's going to be looking at me. So those are some of the questions I hear. But um, my favorite piece of advice is to take yourself out on a date. Valentine's Day is about love. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so show yourself some love. Go ahead and do something that is self-love related because as cliche as it might sound, you can't truly love somebody else until you learn to love yourself. So the way I talk about it is to look at this as practice. Practice loving yourself so you can really love that person when they do come into your life. Ooh, I like that. Yes. <laughs> now we can totally 360 it. What do you do if you have somebody who, in your mind, is going to be your valentine? And then you get around to asking them, like, will you be my valentine? Will you be my girlfriend? Will you go on a date with me? And then they reject you. Harshly, they say no. <laughs> How do you deal? Every rejection feels harsh, it doesn't always, it? No matter what, it could be the nicest rejection, doesn't yeah. matter. How do you deal with the aftermath of that, of getting rejected? Yeah, that's a great quest question. But first of all, it takes a lot of courage to ask somebody out on a date in yeah, general, but especially on Valentine's Day because there's so much pressure. So my, my first thing I would say is give yourself some credit. You did what a lot of people would not do. A lot of people are not brave enough to take that first step or not. They don't have that confidence to ask that big question. So first step is congratulate yourself for doing something that a lot of people wouldn't do. You took your shot and you can't get a date if you don't take your shot. Another cliche, you know, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So hey, give yourself some credit. Right yeah. hey, yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> kind of a sports fan over here. <laughs> <laughs> and I work with a lot of guy clients, so I use a lot of those uh, analogies, and they really clicked. So yeah, I really nice. enjoy using those. But, um, yeah, so that's the first thing is really give yourself some credit. And secondly, you know, respect that person's decision by not taking it personally. A lot of times we feel like I'm the one that was rejected, but really it tends to be more about that person. Maybe they don't celebrate Valentine's Day. Maybe they already have a date or maybe they are dating themselves right now. So that doesn't have so much to do with you as to what's going on with them. So another thing is, you know, use this as a learning moment. A lot of us, you know, weren't able to make that meal that we really are great at that first time. Or maybe the first time we shot a basketball, we were terrible. We airballed it. A lot of things take practice, and this is no different. When we're dating and asking people to go out on dates, probably not going to be too great at it at first, and that's okay. So see this as practice. So last thing I would say is don't give up. Just because one person said no doesn't mean that next person isn't going to say yes. There are a ton of singles out there. I promise you there are as a dating coach. <laughs> lots of singles out there who are ready to say yes to that date. So don't give up and keep trying because if you give, your, if you give up after one no, then you know, you're selling yourself short. Yeah, yeah. rejection is tough. Everybody gets rejected. We can't even count how many times Hudson. Uh-huh. I mean, how many <laughs> times you right. get rejected. So don't feel so bad. My wife still rejects me. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, talking about rejection and heartache around this time, it also feels like a huge time. We've talked about several of these for people to want to like get revenge on an ex or not even revenge, but just find different ways to move on because this is a time where you might be thinking about an ex a lot. Uh, so one of the top ones we saw recently was a animal shelter in New Jersey. They said you can pay 50 bucks and will name a cat after your ex and then neuter it 
<laughs> Feels a little messed up, but I want to know your take as a relationship coach. Do you think that's actually like a positive way to let go of your ex or, you know, do you think that actually helps your mindset or like what would you your advice on that? I would say that it helps in the moment. It helps you feel better in that moment, right? Kind of like punching a wall. Like, okay, I feel good. And then it starts to hurt. So I would say <laughs> it's very similar to that where in the long run, you're not really doing yourself any favors. You're allowing that anger to kind of take hold of you. And that anger is really what we call a secondary emotion. There's something much deeper there, whether it's hurt, betrayal, shock. And when we just focus on that anger, we're not really looking at why did that breakup happen? Why am I feeling this way? So we're not really allowing ourselves to move on. We're just burying those feelings to take with us into the next relationship. And I don't have to tell anybody that relationships are tough enough as it is to be bringing baggage in with that relationship. Yes. So I definitely don't recommend um, <clears throat> doing things like that. I would say be a detective of your own feelings and figure out why am I feeling this way and why did this breakup happen versus just trying to bury those feelings. Hi there, I'd like to cancel an order. <laughs> 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 Not Isaiah. We don't want the cat being named Isaiah. <laughs> and then one last thing, because Valentine's Day, it really does feel like, it, well, it is. It's a, it's a day for those that are in relationships. What are the people that are in relationships, if you coach any of them, what are they asking you when Valentine's Day is rolling around? Yeah, so number one question is gifts. What do I get them? What do I do to make them feel special, to show that love? And how do I celebrate Valentine's Day again, especially for those who have been together for a long time without breaking the bank or, you know, you know, being boring or, you know, how do I make this creative? So those are some big questions I get. And then more specific questions I get sometimes from like women are, what do I do for my man? This is a holiday geared towards women. It's about roses and chocolate. And I'm like, I don't know what to get him. Um, another one is for long distance relationships. So mm. what do you do in that situation? So one of my favorite recommendations that kind of works for all of these is to create a voucher book. And what I mean by that is creating vouchers for your partner. So this gives you an opportunity to show them that you really know them and care about them. So say your partner really loves it when you make them home cooked meals. One of the vouchers could be for a home cooked meal that they nice. could turn in at any time. And then you can enjoy that all year long. It's creative, it's fun, and it's cost effective. Jeez, you hear that E? Make me a voucher book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. I can't wait. <laughs> I'll be cashing them in all that's, year long. That's great, too. And you know, the best part about that advice is that's last minute, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You don't have to worry about rushing out and buying something that's overpriced right now. It's, uh, yeah, up to the last minute. That voucher book, the coupons, man. Mm -hmm. We love the coupons. Yes. <laughs> Sheena, that is such great advice. Thanks for coming in. For anybody who wants to find out more about Sheena, uh, wellness360coach.com, and that's Sheena Hansel, H-A-N-C-E-L, and you can find out more uh, about maybe having Sheena help you out with your relationships. She already clearly helped a lot here. Thanks so much, <laughs> Sheena. <laughs> If you like that video, there's a ton more. Go check out our past videos and subscribe so you don't miss what we do next.